This week I hit a new goal with an average sale price of over $19. If you want to see what's sold, stay tuned. from three queens resale and if you're new to my channel thanks for joining me and if you're returning thanks for coming back for those of you who are new I am a part-time reseller and a full-time middle school teacher which is craziness right now in the time of the pandemic so if you're like me your sales have kind of been slow the last two weeks and so I'm hoping that um, as we move closer to the holidays, they will pick up. But I'm going to get into what sold this week. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned. Also, if you're interested in following me on my reseller journey, be sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button, all the buttons, and as well as following me on Instagram, which is at the bottom. And it's also at the end of the video. And be sure to follow me because you can see the behind the scenes shenanigans and things as I list them. So you can have first dibs. So without further ado, let's get into what sold. So this week was, mm, I had two no zero sales days. And if you're new to this channel, that is not my jam. I like to have sales every day. And that's how I know things are slow. I kind of did some research and just looked on some of the other forums and I noticed that sales have been slow. People are reporting sales are slow on all the platforms. So I'm not going to stress. I'm still sharing in my closet. I'm still listing and I have faith that it will recover here in a week or so. So Sunday, November 15th, zero. No, that's just whenever Sundays are bad for me, it makes my stomach hurt. Moving on to Monday, November 16th, the first thing that sold was this artisan pink hooded long sleeve t-shirt. Um, it was my daughter's and I sold it on auction for $2. The reason I sold it on auction instead of like listing it is because it was something that was kind of unbranded and I just didn't think people would want it. But somebody bought it for $2 on auction. And after the 26 cents in fees, I was left with $1.74. And that had been listed since August. Next, something that sold quickly were these Fabletics um, coal black gray leggings. Um, I struggled with the color on these. In some lights, they look black. On some lights, they look gray. I looked at the tag, and they said black um, when I typed in all the information. So hopefully they don't get returned to me. But they sold in less than a day for $13.50 on eBay. And after the $1.75 in fees, I was left with $11.74. So I had two pair of Fabletics leggings sell this week. And so since both of them sold so quickly with um, with enlisting them, I would say Fabletics leggings are a brand to watch. Now, they're not like light up the sky like $30 sell, but if you're like me, who is more of a volume seller, then they're definitely something that they both flipped quickly this week. So I would definitely look into Fabletics while you're outsourcing, especially since athletic wear, workout wear season is coming up in January. So that brings my Monday total to $13.48 uh, with those two items. Moving on to Tuesday, November 17th, I sold these Levi's 501 men's jeans and they were donated to me. They had been listed since September and they sold for $15 on eBay. After the $1.95 in fees, I was left with $13.05. Then next up was the Saks Fifth Avenue cashmere scarf and it was be it is beautiful. And I got it at the bins back in June, and when I picked it up, I just knew that it was going to be something. So it sold for $40. I accepted an offer for $40. I think I had it listed $60. I was shooting high. But after the $8 in fees, I was left $32. 
Then moving on to another pot, and that was on Poshmark. Um, the, moving on to another item, this also sold on Poshmark. It was this Land's End dress size 10, 12 tall. It had actually been listed for over a year since August of 2019. And it sold, I finally got an offer. It sold for $13. And after $1.69 in fees, um, I was left with $11.31. Lands in, and I don't know if I would continue to pick it up. It is kind of expensive. Um, I, I guess it just depends on the piece. So I'll continue to kind of look at comps before I throw them in my basket. But definitely I don't want to hold on for things for a year or over a year. So, something to think about with that brand. Another long hauler was this Lulu LuLaRoe Low High Lows. Um, let me start over. LuLaRoe High Low Shirt Dress. It had been listed since over a year as no, since about April. I have April in my notes. Um, it sold for seven dollars and twenty cents, and after the ninety-four cents in fees. I was left with six twenty three. That sold on eBay. So that is another brand that I'm just kind of done with LuLaRoe. I have a few more things um, in my closet. Um, so once those sell off, I'm like, I'm just, I don't, I keep saying that, but then I find a really cute print. I don't know. Time to be kind of done with that for a while. Next up was, are these soft eight and a half peep toe pumps that sold on Poshmark. These were actually one of the very first things I listed on Poshmark when I first started oh, over two years ago. And I don't know why they sold because they were mine and I only wore them like twice. Um, maybe Soft just isn't a desirable brand, although I do like it. I just can't wear high heels anymore because I broke my foot and it just has never, not for any length of time, it has never healed right. So, um, yeah, I had to put them up on Poshmark, and they sold for $11 um, with a $2.95 um, shipping fee, and then after, or no, $2.95 Poshmark fee. Then I did send out an offer to Liker, so I paid $2.12 in shipping, and I was left with $5.93. That brings my Tuesday total to $68.55. And I sold five items. And so that made Tuesday my only gold star day of the week. I know. I hate it. I need more gold star days. Um, Wednesday, November 18th, I had a kittizen sale. Yay! For those of you who are new, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is. For the, now I have cough in my mouth. This is real uncut raw footage, folks. I have discontinued listing on Kitizen. So I used to cross list everything to four platforms, Macari, Kitizen, Poshmark, and eBay. And since about October, I have discontinued listing everything to Macari and Kitizen. Only certain things get listed over there. Um, definitely kids items go to Kitizen, but I'm kind of like done listing everything. Just because um, the time and energy it took to cross-list, I do not subscribe to any cross-listing services. I just copy and paste. Um, and so the time that it was taking me, I wanted to see if my sales were impacted by not listing cross-listing on those two sites. The things that are on those sites, um, I'm just letting them sell through as things list or sell. I delete them from on other sites. I delete them from them. Um, so, so far, I don't feel like I need to go back to them. But, you know, I'll keep looking at it as we pledge, as keep going through the year. So these totes boots sold for $15.97. Um, I had had them since the summer, so I didn't expect them to sell until... Um, around this time. After the $2.42 in Poshmark fees and the $8.15 I had to pay in shipping, I was left with $6.33. So that's another reason I'm kind of like, I don't feel like things sell on Kitizen unless I pay for the shipping. So I'm just kind of like over that. 
But like I said, I will continue to list kit things there because they don't always sell that well on Poshmark either. Also on Wednesday were these J was this J Jill um, Pure Jill Ballet Sleeve Top um, Black Size 3X. Anytime I see large plus size J Jill Chico's items, I go ahead and buy them. They always sell, not for a ton of money, but they do flip. So closer one way. So if you're new to reselling, that's just something that I do, especially the Pure Jill. So this top sold on eBay. It had been listed since September. And after it sold for $14. After the dollar and eighty-two cents in fees, I was left with twelve dollars and eighteen cents, which brings my Wednesday total to eighteen dollars and fifty-one cents. Moving on to Thursday, November 19th, I had one sell. And it was just J. McLaughlin three-quarter um, collared top. Um, it was not made of that Catalina knit stuff. I've only had one like that. If I ever find it again, I'll snatch it up. But um, I do pick up J. McLaughlin because it is a pricey brand. And it does do well. This one sold on Poshmark. And I believe the only reason it went for $22 is because it did have a spot on it that I could not get out it with the busy pattern it was hard to notice it it would be hard to notice when when wearing it but as far as for selling i just discounted it because i did note that in the listing it sold for twenty two dollars and after the four dollars and forty cents in fees i was left with seventeen sixty um it had been listed since september so my thursday total with the one item was seventeen sixty Moving on to Friday, November 20th, um, I sold this pink Wear Everywhere bra, size 36, um, double D. It had been listed since July. I did pick this up at the bins. I do pick up all Victoria's Secret um, bras if they're in good condition, or really almost any bra if they're in good condition and a larger size. If it's Victoria's Secret or Pink, regardless of the size, I will pick it up. But some of the other Bally, other brands, um, I'm searching for those large sizes. As a person who's had once very large breasts, I've had them reduced. Um, see, we're getting to know each other. Um, it can be expensive and hard to find those double D, F, G bras. So when I see them... Um, I always pick them up and list them. So, um, just a, uh, and they cost nothing at the bins basically because they weigh nothing. Now, definitely look at them and make sure they have all the snaps and there's not a bunch of pilling and fuzz and the underwire isn't all built, bent up. A lot of times, this is what happened to me, people get, when they get pregnant, they get really big and they get those really big bras and so once they go lose weight or the breasts go back down, they don't need those really big bras. So they actually did not wear them that many times. Um, and so they're in really good condition. So if you're not looking at big, big booby bras, do that. Free advice there. Um, moving on, and that sold on Poshmark if I didn't say Moving on, I sold these Bear Paw Toddler Boots, gray, size 10, on Poshmark. Um, they sold for $25, and after the $5 in fees, I was left with $20. And then next, I sold this Spartina 449 bracelet um, on Poshmark. It sold for $17, and after the $3.40 in fees and a $2.12 shipping discount, I was left with $11.48. That was a bracelet of mine that I have never w worn. Not really. My husband got it for me. I told him I was going to sell it, though. I've had it for years. It really, um, I don't have it on now because it clinks on the desk. There was a real clinking in my videos, and I was like, what is that? It was my Tiffany bracelet that clinks on the desk as I move my arm. My charm bracelet. And that's really, besides my Apple Watch, the only wrist jewelry I wear because it bothers me. Not really a bangle girl. So, um, that's why I let it go when I was cleaning out my jewelry box. So, my Friday total was $37.41. Saturday, I had zero sales. So, I started my week with zero, and I'm ending my week with zero. I don't know. I sent out tons of offers. I just, 
I got good stuff. Check me out. It's all linked below. Um, but that brings my weekly total to $256.09. And my items, I sold 13 items with an average sale price of $19.69, which is awesome for me because my goal is to hit 15 every week as an average sale price. And I have been doing that pretty consistently. And so my goal in 2020 was to move towards $20 in um, average sale price. So I'm already kind of moving in that direction. The cost of goods for all 13 items that I sold was $7. So between things being donated and the bins and all that, I was able to get it down to $7, which is like 50 cents, less than 50 cents an item if I were to average out um, just on these 13 items. So one of the things that I wanted to start including in my what sold videos is where things are selling. Now keep in mind I am not listing the volume on Poshmark and Kitizen that I list on the other site. So they're probably not going to have as many sales from week to week. But um, I am going to keep them in my totals as long as they are places that I do have items listed and I do occasionally list. So first I, uh, Poshmark had seven sales eBay 5, uh, Macari 0, and Kitizen 1. So if you're looking at what platforms to resell on, I would definitely say eBay and Poshmark if you're going to focus on two because that is where the majority of my sales come and that is where those two have the biggest platforms. Um, if you're only going to do one, I would say eBay because you do not have to share and do all that social component you can just list your stuff and I don't want to say forget it because I feel like all the sites need some type of management but definitely eBay if you're a part-timer starting out and want to get into reselling so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you've learned anything liked anything just enjoyed hanging with me like my book my broad tip definitely hit the thumbs up subscribe below and until next time be safe and bye